Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. Um, 3704, your last four. 3704, what's your name you calling from, please? Peace, this is Hollop. Brother Hollop, what's going on, kind sir? What's up, brother? How you doing? Oh, man, we all right here. We're, we're chopping it up. We're actually going over some, uh, some of the interesting stories, uh, from this summer here. We were talking about, uh, the Harvey victims. And I actually was mentioning that, you know, we, we talked about, uh, harp a little bit and we were talking about how I I was basically saying that if you were broke and didn't own your house or own anything in the area that you had to evacuate from your ass ain't going back there your ass ain't going back there Um, so that's where we kind of were at Um, what are your thoughts on Harvey and the the evacuation the, 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 the bullshit rescue process that some of our people endured and what have you, and I'll move on to the next caller. What do you got for us, sir? Well, um, I don't know if you saw the last video I did. Um, it was titled, Black Power Americans Are Missing in Action in yes. Clinton, Michigan, and Texas. Yes, that's right. And yes, I did. This whole situation is sort of like bittersweet for people like me, this, this nationalist and BAIO people, because... All of the people that keep talking about we can do it right here are missing in action whenever these natural disasters happen, whenever we have the inability to respond to situations. They go into the tall weeds. You don't hear nothing from them. No. And me, I'm still out here saying the same damn thing I was saying before the disaster happened. See, Mm -hmm. we can talk about HARP. We can talk about all this stuff. But would you have a HARP if you didn't control the infrastructure? Right. Mm-hmm. You're right. You have to control the infrastructure in order for you to even be able to do something like that. Right. All of the right. things that we complaining about is the result of their infrastructure. When these things happen and these um, corporations create these charities, that's a part of the infrastructure. Infrastructure is so important. And I've been right. screaming this from the top of my freaking lungs for years. And if we th- if we stopped thinking like individuals and started thinking like a damn nation, we wouldn't right. we wouldn't be so hopeless right now. Because to be honest with you, this is a perfect opportunity to get the average black person to start thinking about nationhood. This is the perfect You're right. opportunity. You're right. You're because right. all the information is on our side. We've been talking about this stuff for years. All of these black power Americans and these militant integrationists and these Captain America Negroes cannot be found. <laughs> Where's all these Native American tribes that's helping out their um, Aboriginal brothers and sisters in, in Texas and Flint, Michigan? All that stuff is a bunch of bullshit. Right. And this and it's stuff like this that shows that it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. We 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 have a tremendous opportunity to make great strides in terms of getting nationhood consciousness into our people and for them to stop thinking like damn individuals. Because to be mm-hmm. honest with you, I can't even get mad at the people that's twerking. What do they got? <laughs> what do they got? Like that. after you hear after you hear all this information, no matter how much inf- I can go out there and I can give information on what the white man is doing, I can give information on Harp, I can give information on that. Now I take the average black person, give them that information. What are they supposed to do with that? Right. You out there trying to get food, clothing, and shelter for yourself and your family. I'm throwing all this infrastructure and nationhood and, and, and global stuff on your lap, and then I expect you to do something with it as an individual? Hmm. But if we was a nation, if we actually thought like a nation, if we actually had an organized body, we can deal with right. all the these natural disasters could actually be opportunities for us. Because don't you yes. think the white man sees these, these disasters as an opportunity for himself? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
because he controls oh, yeah. the infrastructure. So if they come through and wipe out an area that's got all black people in it, all he has to do is just replenish that area, refix it up and rehabilitate it and put white folks in it. Right. What did he lose? Right. Yeah. No, you but see, that's the problem. Pro- we don't think systematically. We don't mm-hmm. think collectively. We only think it's individual. Everything is about some self-help bullshit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give, and that's the that's the point that I had made before. Like when I look, listen to all of these these videos, and and I'm not putting them down. Like the hidden colors and all that stuff. That's beautiful stuff. I, I don't. I'm not against it. Right. But how do you take all you you you? The person is watching that. You you let them know. Listen. There's a global system of white supremacy that's out to get you and kill you. And then at the end of the video, all right. So go out there and be black. <laughs> really? Yeah. You throw all this stuff in my lap and you don't have a solution to it? Right. right. So this, you know, I, I look at it a little differently. I think it's a no, golden I- opportunity for us to get nationhood consciousness into the people and start telling them about and also pointing out the fact that all of these Captain America Negroes, these militant integrationists, and these um, black power Americans... These these um, Facebook Indians, <laughs> indigenous Instagrammers. <laughs> oh man! You know these Native uh-huh. American tweeters are all missing in action. They ain't got nothing to say. They're gonna wait until all of this dies down, and then they're gonna pop their head up talking that bullshit one more time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. I'm going to tell you something that um, I was listening to Jason Black the other day on, on his show, and he he made a point that there were people reporting this. Now, this is I, I find it's very interesting, I, I, and this goes along with what you're, what you're saying, because there are people that were, before the storm hit, they were already preparing for what they were going to do right after. There was groups of Mexicans. We can talk all the shit we want to about them. There were groups of Mex- Mexicans bum-rushing the Lowe's and Home Depot's Buying wheelbarrows, cement, all types of stuff that you would use to, you know what I'm saying, to build and to uh, make money with for afterward. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They They weren't buying this stuff for, you know, before, you know, to deal with the storm. They would do it. They knew they they had a plan for what they were going to do with this stuff after the storm. You understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So um, this goes along with, you know, trying to build infrastructure. I don't know what they, they were going to do uh, with the cement and these wheel arrows and all this stuff, but they were planning to do something. They had a plan, some kind mm-hmm. of plan. What that plan was, I can't, I can't tell you, but they had a plan. You know? Yep. We, we don't have a, yep. we don't plan for nothing. Well, we don't have a lot of no weed, families, they, they didn't have the basic necessities before Harvey even came. There right. is no so weed. little bit they had was even right. wiped out. But we, we right. still have to we have to put action behind what we're saying. That's where I say right. we need to be not just saying, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. But that's what I mean when I say loyal to a fault. Like you can't just get discouraged because you see a video of some niggas stealing some goddamn shoes and say, okay, well, fuck it, man. I don't want to do nothing. That That's, right. that's the, that defeatist right. attitude takes over right. really quickly. Yeah. And, let, and let the me, mere let, fact that there is no we on a social, right. economic, and political level, we do not exist. We, the whole we purpose of what I do and what the BAIO is about is creating the we. Because right. right now we're just a scattered bunch of individualists, and we're just aligned by aesthetic similarities. We look alike, so therefore we black. Some vague right. abstraction. Nothing. Yes. Solid, nothing concrete, nothing tangible, and that's the reason why nothing gets done. It's so freaking simple, man. Yeah, this is right to the point of lunacy. It is, it is, brother. Let let me bring this next caller in real quick, guys. So we wind out with time. Hang in there with us, folks. Uh, seven thousand. Your last four. Seven thousand. What's your name? You calling from, please? Hello, it's Suzette. How are you doing, Suzette? Hello. Yes, hi. hi. We hear you. Okay, good. You, um, well, yeah, um, I want to give you some information first on um, the the UN that is doing this. It began with Bush 41, but it was Clinton that actually signed it. 
our connection with okay. the UN, the stacking pact, the Agenda 21. They need to wipe out certain areas of poverty because there's no way else to move these people collectively and in one big swoop when you've got a couple of thousands or a couple of millions. And so what better way to move them than to take advantage of a weather crisis and make it worse, a catastrophe to where they can't return home now. So, okay. Oh, gee, what are we? You guys have nowhere to go. We have a place for you. Come over here. We'll take care of you. We're going to put you in one of these boxes, and you get to live upstairs and work downstairs, and it's called sustainable development, and it's going to be great. It's going to be great. We're not going to have any more dollars. We're going to energy credit. It's called technocracy. It began way back when. <laughs> And okay. it was out, and then it came back, and now it's back. There was a particular scientist that had fought against it in Congress and actually got Congress to got, get the U.S. to back down. And this was back just after Clinton. But these poverty-ridden areas, you're right. And, yes, cloud seeding and HARP. They use HARP to manipulate the cloud seeding, and they're doing it around the world causing drought, <laughs> causing mm-hmm. floods, mass floods. It's not an act of God. But you can well, do something about it. And what you can do about it is in your city. You don't have to fight big government because it's they're in your cities right now. They're inspecting your homes, your apartments, your rentals, and it's through the landlord. They're taking it through the landlord saying, well, we need to make sure – that the living um, areas are habitable. We want to make sure they have fresh water and gas. And it's for them. It's the benefit of them. And here they come, walking into your place, checking things out. Mm-hmm. They have no business in your house. You rented it. You own it, whichever. And yet you've got these people who are unelected telling city officials what they need to do, and they go along with it. Mm-hmm. So you need to get into your city council meetings. And any time they bring up anything like that, inspecting your homes or any other type of thing that sounds odd, stand up and say something. You can do it. You have that opportunity in the council meetings. You don't have to call in ahead of time <clears throat> or anything. Oh, I was chasing my dogs before. <laughs> no, I, 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 I get you. I get you. Um, it's something that, uh, like I said earlier, uh, is a gentleman I listened to. Um, he's on YouTube, Jason Black, um, had actually mm-hmm. mentioned something to that effect, um, Holler, um and, and Sine, and he said that, but he said that this would happen after the fact, after your place has been flooded out, and you figure you want to go back there, okay, and you want mm-hmm. to try to fix your home. Mm-hmm. You're going to have these people come to your home and say, okay, well, yeah, you can stay. But uh, such and such will need to be repaired, right? Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. ain't going to have oh, the money box. or the resources mm-hmm. to fix such and such. Mm-hmm. You understand? So this, yeah. is, this is how they get you. They're going to come there and they're going to say, oh, yeah, you can stay, but, uh, you know, these jack whatever, these jack plugs or whatever the hell it is need to be uh, changed out. And, you know, (laughs) I mean, you don't have the wherewithal to do the work yourself. Mm -hmm. So, it's not going to be asked. Go ahead. ahead, And it's not even just in poverty-stricken areas, because let me tell you, here in California, San Diego, um, Oakland, San Francisco, you can look it up online. It's real. There are no car zones. They inspected these areas. They're transitioning everything over. They're taking cars away. They were your cars. You can ride the bikes. It begins with one bike lane. It takes a whole car lane. So you've got three car lanes. Now it's two. And in, a, in those cases up in Oakland, no more cars in an area. There's an area that's zoned. Shopping center, housing, no cars. <laughs> hmm. Did you not? Real, real, and right. so, I'm sorry. No, no, we wind it down on time. I just want to get a, a couple of closing comments. I'm sorry, Suzette. We we, we, no, we no, hit this part of the, we hit this part of it late in the show because um, I had fine. some other uh, things on so that much. actually. Yeah. 
Um, Thank you for but, taking my call. You, you got it, Suzette. Um, uh, holla, brother. I know you had something you you were wanting to say real quick there, sir. Yeah. Um, my question is, what is the solution besides nationhood? I would really love someone to tell me because, see, the problem there, there with, with these city councils and and going to these meetings is, corporations have five year projections. By the time you respond, they've already implemented where they, what they're going to do. So you're responding five years late. It's not like these corporations just decided they got up in the morning and one day, hey, we're going to take over the infrastructure. These, these plans have already been in motion for like at least five years. There's been cities where it's So you're already lo- you're in a losing position when you're even trying to respond to it. See, the problem mm-hmm. is we don't control – the land that we live in. And as long as you don't control the land that you live in, all of the stuff that we're talking about on this show today is infrastructure related. Mm-hmm. Right. The only people that can make these moves is the people that control the land. I got you. And so right. until we get with the program, this stuff is going to continue perpetually. It was war they wanted and war they got, but they put the in the heat. 